Welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech. My name is Scott and we are going back to the 80s. Uh, so Transformers. Transformers was a little bit before my time. Um, my cousin was really big into Transformers. Um, but I did watch like the right reruns and uh, Beast Wars uh, was big when I was a kid. Um, so, you know, Starscream was always a character that I really enjoyed. Uh, and when I saw it was Monarch Black and it had the Monarch mechanic, also another mechanic I really enjoy. Um, you know, I was very happy to try and build around with this one. I wanted to try and make sure that it was a little bit different to Shieldred, um, where I wanted my opponents to draw. In this one, I really only want myself to draw, um, because essentially when I am the Monarch and I draw a card, my opponent's going to lose two life. And of course, how do I get the Monarch? On the other side, Flying, Menace, Haste, you get in, right? You get the Monarch. And so whenever we deal uh, combat damage, if there is no Monarch, I become the Monarch right so well that sorry that player becomes the monarch if there is no monarch but of course if there is monarch and i do damage i'll become the monarch right so it's just to introduce the, the uh, monarch so usually on the first turn i have to give the monarch to somebody but then i just get it back right flying menace haste it just gets people so with that in mind we'll go through the deck so first up just draw lots and lots of draw so damital pack is really cool because it's an expel um so we are mono black so we can make a lot of um a lot of mana so x can be like 10 right near the end of the game so you're going to draw 10 lose 10 but then your opponent one of your opponents is going to lose 20 right so it can be a nice big uh burn spell essentially so really really nice uh daily dispute Another simple one, uh, just to kind of get the, the engines rolling. There are a bunch of creatures that I just don't care about um, and happy to sacrifice. It's not really a sacrifice deck, but there are creatures that I can sacrifice. You get the treasure back, right? So draw two, fantastic for two. Knight's Whisper, draw two, lose two, for two, fantastic. Plum the Forbidden, another one with a bit of sacrifice. If I've got extra creatures that I want to get rid of, uh, I can do so. But essentially it's, you know, draw one, lose a life. And then hopefully, you know, it's like, draw three lose three for two mana which is really really nice um so yeah great sign in blood uh draw two lose two you know our opponents one of our opponents lose four braids a risen nightmare another one when there's just creatures i don't care about or a land sure i'll get rid of a land just to draw those cards just to get that trigger um of hitting my opponent so the whole thing really centers around me being the monarch so make sure obviously to be the monarch uh, dark deal I have always always have a healthy hand right like I have a lot of cards in my hand so discarding this quite nice uh, and then you know wheeling opponents also can be nice of course you know make sure that you uh, that you're you know not giving them too many cards obviously uh, but we want to be drawing cards so a nice refresh of those cards I don't care uh, what cards they are as long as I'm just drawing cards which is really really fun uh, Geeks, your moth, your moth Praetor. Uh, so I didn't, again, like I said, I didn't want this to kind of be a shielded deck where I want my opponents to be drawing cards. So, but I did include Geeks. I think Geeks is, is really nice. It works with the me attacking for Monarch um, kind of theme going on and also, you know, encourages my opponents to attack each other, uh, which is nice. And then, of course, the, the seven, uh, you know, mana cost activated ability on this uh, can really... Uh, you know, really change the game a lot. Uh, I have, a, like I said, healthy hand. Um, so it's great to just discard and just see what I get, right? Lots of fun. Uh, morbid opportunities, uh, lots of uh, creatures dying, some on my side, some on my opponent's side. So, you know, just having this just to get those triggers around the table. Frexen Arena, nice and simple, drawing a card each turn. Read the Bones, another one, um, you know, draw two, lose two. This one has Scry, which is kind of nice. Dread Presence, playing a lot of Swamps uh, coming in. It can also help with a little bit of life gain and getting rid of some of those, like, um, pesky elves or something like that. Um, some of those tokens you might want to kind of get rid of. If someone is going wide enough, um, they might want to try to take Monarch away from you. Um, so having that trigger has been qu quite nice, a little life gain. Side for mine, you know, six for one. Uh, you're going to draw three. Your opponent is each going to discard a card. Of course, it's their worst card, but, you know, we're drawing drawing cards. We just want one. Lolf Spider Queen has been really nice. Uh, 
it creates blockers both with reach and menace um so it's been really really cool to help protect um and keep the monarch which has been cool uh, because essentially you know it blocks everything uh and then it can draw a card right the ultimate doesn't really matter sure you can increase what star screams doing for commander damage whatever um actually does this work with commander damage okay they lose life no so it doesn't work with commander damage obviously uh but yeah i just don't go for the the ultimate uh i make blockers and i draw cards fantastic Necrolegia, uh, really interesting one. So it's this one's five mana instant speed must be done at your end step, uh, and you're gonna pay life. Of course, you're gonna try to figure out okay how much life can I pay because then your opponent's gonna essentially take double that life, right? So it's really for uh, late game, kind of like um, Damnable Pact. It, this one works in a very similar way where we're just gonna pay that life and just be happy to be rid of somebody. Uh, really, really nice. Singing study. So our commander is uh, four CMC uh, mana value. Um, so instant speed, draw four, lose four. It's okay, right? It could be better in, in other decks, obviously, uh, but it is a nice instant speed. I did try to make sure that I had a lot of, like my bigger spells were more instant speed when it comes to draw. Um, and my, you know, cheaper ones were sorceries. That's okay. Uh, but having the instant speed flexibility has been really, really nice. Street Wraith, uh, just pay two, draw a card. Someone's going to lose two life, right? So really, really nice. Uh, Kotha Fed. So the whole reason I built this Star Scream is because I love this card. But this card is nigh unplayable. Reason being, Smothering Tide, right? Your opponent gets a, a treasure. They crack the treasure. This triggers. You draw a card. You can't pay the tax. They get a treasure. And you just lose a game, right? Because you're just going to draw cards and you're going to lose life and it's just going to continue on. But now the table has turned. If you are the Monarch and you have Starscream out, they're going to crack their treasure. You're going to draw a card. You're going to lose a life. They're going to lose two life, right? So finally, we can hit back at the Smothering Tide decks, uh, which... I've just had a blast doing. Um, so, you know, I just had to put this card in. Of course, you know, if you're not into this card, don't bother. But I really like this card. I think it's a great card. Um, but Smothering Tide makes it unplayable. But in Starscream, it's actually really good. Liliana, Dreadhorde General, makes blockers for keeping uh, Monarch. Um, and then when those blockers die, we draw cards. It also sacrifices creatures, right? This is one of the best Planeswalkers in in the format. Fantastic, but we want it to be drawing cards and it makes blockers. Peer into the Abyss. Now, Peer into the Abyss is essentially the win condition of the deck. Um, you will draw half your deck, I don't know, 30, 40 cards, and then those triggers are gonna go on the stack and then you're gonna kill one, two people. Uh, and then you really just have to duke it out with one other person, right? So Peer into the Abyss, if you're not into like almost, it's not it's not an I win button, but it might as well be. People concede. Uh, you know, if you're not into that, don't put this in. But essentially, you know, you get seven mana, you're going to draw half, you're going to kill people. Fantastic card. Then Villas Broker of the Blood. Our commander doesn't have anything, any synergies around this. It's just that all of our draw spells generally lose us life right so just having this draw those cards we're gonna lose life then we're drawing more cards getting more triggers it's been really really nice uh it is on the top end um so sometimes you know if, if i get this earlier just have to pitch it um but uh having this late game really really solid okay so that's the draw now of course we've got monarch we can make monarch ourselves with our commander so that's really really great but sometimes we just need to steal it or we can get it out there first and then get it um, with our star screen when we're ready so we do have some monarchs just to make sure that we can get it back uh quarter ambitions nice uh it's again losing life um which is essentially we want to be whittling people's life down or you know or discarding the cards right so it's been really really nice my chases to Cree just helps uh, again getting that reach across the table because maybe Starscream might only be able to do half of someone's life total, uh, but this is is really really nice and it in, you know disincentivizes somebody to attack us, which is great. Raven Lost Adventure. Okay, this is not Monarch, but 
if we're in Monarch, we might as well be playing Initiative. Uh, so, four mana. So, I, I, I just don't play this card in any other deck. But, uh, you take the Initiative, so you go into one of the dungeons i forget what it's called um the one that's uh in legacy uh it's got um grave uh, graveyard hate so it's exiling uh people's creatures which is great uh and if it attacks if you complete a dungeon usually doesn't really matter too much this is generally gone by the time i've completed dungeon but it's to get the initiative uh into effect and you know it's just like monarch it's a fun mechanic uh, to play around in multiplayer so really cool uh, Thorn of the Black Rose, Death Touch, again, helps keep us uh, Monarch, but gives us the Monarch as well. Uh, and then Custody Lich. So, I find that uh, keeping the Monarch is the hardest part. I can get the Monarch, that's no problems. I can always get the Monarch, but keeping it uh, has been difficult. So, this really helps with the, the flip-flop um, of, of the Monarch. So, just in case, we can get rid of people's creatures. Okay, so some alternative win conditions or life gain or, or some miscellaneous things here. Uh, so Shieldred, um, really fantastic card, solid card. Uh, whenever we draw a card, so that life gain is what we want. Again, we're not really encouraging our opponents to draw, uh, so that life loss isn't too much. But, you know, to life a turn uh, does add up. Uh, but here it's a death touch and life gain kind of card. Uh, it's a really, really nice. So, you know... This is probably like the weakest kind of configuration for a shieldred, and it's still very good in here. That's how good the card is. Uh, Exquisite Blood. So whenever an opponent loses life, we're going to gain that life. So we're going to have them lose two life. We're going to gain two life. Uh, so really, really nice. Of course, you can play um, Sanguine Bond with this uh, for another win condition. Uh, I'm not. I'm just here for the life gain. Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Of course, uh, Devotion, where we're not too heavy on Devotion, but the life gain does really help, and it helps with the reach, uh, which is important. Psychosis Crawler, we're drawing a lot of cards, Monarch, all that kind of stuff. So here, it's again trying to get that reach across the table. I don't care how big it is. I just want it out when I'm, when I'm drawing cards. And then, and then <laughs> Wound Reflection. So if you've seen any one of my videos, you'll know that I have any excuse to put Wound Reflection in my deck. I love this card. Um, so at the end of each end step, uh, sorry, at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost, right? So if you're hitting people, target this person, target this person, target this person, then they lose double that, right? So really, really fantastic, of course encouraging maybe for them to attack each other maybe one of them has the monarch you don't have the monarch um they're still going to take damage from my wound reflection not necessarily the star screen but still fantastic card super fun okay protection now we do need protection like i said we're not good at keeping the monarch so really trying to hold on to it as best as possible uh, so we have some protection as well for star scream as well as for ourselves uh, so maze of if just nice just to get if somebody's hitting us with a big trampler or something we can just um, maze of it and get it out of combat which is great protect our uh, monarch darkness prevents all damage Pre uh you know protecting our monarch which is great so fogging someone uh Malachi rebirth if someone's going to take out our star scream or our shieldred like we have some high profile creatures uh, that we want to kind of keep around so Malachi rebirth it's also a land on the other end undying malice just another nice one that yeah if someone tries to take out one of our creatures it can just come back right we're not really playing reanimation but having a nice like save our creature um kind of effect from board wipe or something uh has been really really nice swift foot boots our commander has haste, but we really, really want that hexproof. Uh, just that added um, protection from from being targeted, uh, because we do want to make sure that our star scream gets in. Because, like I said, it usually gets in as long as we can save it for removal. So, spoiling another kind of fog. Someone's going to hit us with all their creatures. We're essentially going to fog them uh, and keep our monarch. No mercy. If they do want to attack us, sure, they're going to lose a lot of creatures, right? So here's just, again, almost that, that rattlesnake kind of effect where we want to kind of discourage people from attacking us. No mercy helps with that. 
Soylent Arbiter has been really interesting. I really like this card. Um, it, it, you know, it has all the weakness of a creature, um, but no more than one creature can attack, no more than one creature can block. Uh, essentially, that mat does make Starscream uh, unblockable, uh, which is great, but we only want one creature to attack, and that is our Starscream, and essentially it would then be unblockable. So it almost it guarantees us uh, getting our Monarch back, as well as uh, protecting our life, uh, which is what we want. Okay, Graveyard Hate, Dathy Voidwalker, fantastic. Has Shadow, so it can also um, get the Monarch if we need, if we really can't get in. Um, but it's here for Graveyard Hate, it's here for getting one of our opponent's spells. Um, yeah, it really changes the dynamic of the game. Fantastic card. Okay, Removal. Sword of Pact. Uh, I've got this one because I found that I was really just... I was really utilizing my mana. I was using it a lot. Um, so some, having something that was free uh, is really, really nice. This one is non-black, and of course you have to pay for it on your next turn, but that's okay. I want to get rid of a blocker. I want to get rid of somebody that's attacking me. You know, they think my walls are down, and then I hit them with a free spell. That's usually how it works out. Uh, Defile, we're playing a lot of swamps. Uh, negative one, negative one for each. Gets rid of um, indestructible, so that's great. Uh, feed the swarm. Lots of enchantments out there. You know, someone has like a, a ghostly prison and things like that. They can really mess with, with the combat step. Um, it's nice for that. Soul Shatter, just get rid of big things. It's a three for one. Uh, you know, generally the... The thing that you want to kind of get rid of is your opponent's um, highest mana value stuff. Uh, so it's been really, really nice, nice and cheap. Toxic Deluge, board wipe, essentially. Um, you know, you're going to pay some life, so you need to obviously manage your life total. Uh, but really, really nice to get rid of everyone. Uh, Deadly Relic, another free one. We definitely want to be playing our commander out. Uh, so this is usually online. So happy to target uh, Exile. Uh, target creature again those people that think that our walls are down uh, trying to take the monarch from us uh, Hagra mauling destroy target creature really bad murder but it's a land on the other side lethal schemes um, another one where uh, you know it's drawing us a card it's a removal spell that draws us a card which is what we want we want to get their star scream triggers um, the plus one plus one we don't really um, mind too much Mutilate, again, a negative one, negative one for each swamp. Really, really fantastic. You know, defiles for one creature, mutilates for all creatures. Stuff out, free, again, um, non-black, um, just like um, a sort of pack, uh, but, you know, really nice because it's free. And then Curtain's Call, just a two for one, simple, um, you know, only three mana, I guess, you know, if you got four opponents. Uh, and then I've got Their Name is Death. So just isn't that additional board wipe. This one, you know, doesn't hurt our star scream. So hopefully it wipes the board, uh, and then you know our star scream can be left to still get that monarch, which is great. Okay, ramp. Um, so we have a lot of draw spells. We're, we're trying to get through our draw spells. Um, so I've got a little bit of ramp in here. So dark ritual, just great for that burst of mana. Wait for his bobble to get that swamp out. Arcane signet, you know, two mana mana rocks for black. Dousing dagger. So uh, this is the only equipment that I'm playing. Uh, be mindful, like if you're playing equipment and star scream is uh, flipping around equipment will fall off so you can't just have like i was playing with commander's plate and all this kind of other stuff that just didn't work um but dousing dagger when you do that combat damage it's trigger and it will turn into the land on the other side and that's what we want right so uh it will no longer be equipped so fantastic we don't care about giving our opponents creatures they can't block star screen so it doesn't matter fantastic i guess if you haven't seen the land on the other side Add three mana ready color. Fantastic. Uh, Fell one stone, another um, cheap mana rock. You know, people play black, so it's usually online. Jet medallion, a lot of black, uh, a lot of black spells um, that are like one in a black, uh, two in a black. Nothing that's really too pip intensive. Um, so jet medallion has been great. Mind stone helps draw a card if we need. Thought vessel, you know, just in case we have a, a few cards, a few extra cards in our hand, uh, it's nice. Uh, Black Market Connections, I love this card. It would, you know, you can go in the draw section as well. Uh, in this deck, we are generally always drawing a card and creating that treasure, that ramp, that three uh, life loss, don't care. We want to draw that card. We want to create that treasure. 
I have sometimes, it, it, like it depends on the deck, but in this one, I sometimes I will create the um, shapeshifter just so that I have a blocker for Monarch. So keep that in mind, but I generally it's first two. Crypt Gas, double those uh, swamps, which is what we want. Uh, and also Extort to help with a bit of life gain. Has been really, really nice. Scepter of Eternal Glory, we are playing a lot of swamps. So this can really uh, switch on uh, four mana. It's cheap enough. Um, but yeah, really there to help burst us the next turn after Starscream. Um, Solemn Simulacrum, just get those swamps out, bit of the ramp. And it's something nice that we can just sacrifice to draw a card. And then, uh, then uh, lands. So, Bajuka Bog, Graveyard Hate, always need it. Um, nice and simple. Cabal Coffers, again, to make a lot of mana. We need Peer to Abyss mana. We need Damnable Pack mana, all that kind of stuff, right? Cabal Stronghold, playing a lot of basic swamps. Uh, so, really, really nice. Myriad Landscape. I didn't want to pay too many tap lands because I want to start screaming out on three, uh, but it is nice ramp, uh, and we kind of need that in black. Nick throws shrine to Nick. Uh, Nick's, you know, devotion is is okay. It's not too strong, uh, but this is still such a powerful land um, that it's going to generate a few mana. Uh, Reliquary Tower again. You know, we have a sizable hand. Uh, it can get quite large, so it helps with the um, holding on to those cards. Uh, Shizu's Death Storehouse. So. We are essentially unblockable, you know, Flying Menace, Haste is unblockable, so, you know, but just in case, there's Shizu's Death Storehouse, just in case, right, just in case I need to get through, I didn't want too many, like, trying to make it more unblockable, so that I can guarantee I get it, it usually gets in, right, unless you're playing someone's Dragon deck or whatever, um, this usually gets in, but just in case, you know, this is untapped Black Source, so it's fine. Shrimp Mind, Somebody else is playing Cabal Coffers, Guy's Cradle, whatever, Field of the Dead. Uh, always play a land destruction land in my deck, um, you know, just to get rid of those things. Uh, really fantastic. Throne of the High City. Sometimes, you know, again, we just need to get Monarch, so we're okay with just uh, getting this, um, you know, on the board. And then maybe late game, we need to get that Monarch so that then we can peer into the Abyss or, or something like that um, when we have enough mana. So, you know. Here is just a nice untapped mana source. War room, drawing cards for one one life, whatever. Um, a land that draws cards, great. And then wasteland. Uh, I had a little bit of extra room in this one, so I wanted an additional um, la um, land destruction land. Uh, you could have Dem uh, demolition field, which is the new one. Uh, that's also really good um, in in that spot because I think wastelands is a bit expensive. So, you know. Having an additional one was nice. Uh, and then 24 swamps. Um, so yeah. Starscream, really, really fun. Um, definitely my favorite character from Transformers. Um, you know, that uh, a bridesmaid, never a bride kind of character. Perpetual loser. Um, but never gives up. So yeah, really, really cool. Um, and of course, he's a... You know, a fighter jet. And when I was a kid, I was like, "Wow, it's a you know character that's fighter jet." So um, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed this one. Um, it's a little bit different to the Shieldred, uh, which is nice, uh, but it still has that kind of like peer into the abyss kind of line where you want to go for a big draw half your deck kind of thing. You definitely can play with things like Howling Mind uh, and stuff like that, but I didn't really want to be giving my opponents cards in this deck um but yeah it's been a lot of fun and of course like in any chance i can play wound reflection <laughs> so yeah i hope you enjoy i uh, hope you enjoy the deck and i'll see you later